The inventor of the hydrogen bomb claimed it was a mistake to give up on thorium since a nuclear reactor powered by thorium rather than uranium would provide humanity with energy for thousands of years. But today, it's completely hidden. What went wrong then? Is thorium ready to return when multiple firms think it's possible? Let's look a little closer to see what's happening. The kind of nuclear energy that was initially researched in the 1950s and then completely abandoned is now gaining more and more attention. Advocates contend that it is still a better option than uranium reactors already in use and is very much worth further consideration. Thorium is a heavy element that can be extracted from the earth and used in fission reactors, similar to the ones we have now. Both are utilized in a well-managed chain reaction that produces heat and turns a generator and a steam turbine into energy. Practically speaking, there isn't much of a distinction between uranium and thorium. Nuclear physics explains the specifics. But when a neutron strikes a uranium atom, it releases energy and other neutrons that attack other uranium atoms, causing the fission chain reaction to occur directly. However, when a neutron strikes thorium, it doesn't produce immediate fission. Instead, it absorbs the neutron and transforms it into an atom of uranium. It turns out that it is possible for much more thorium in a reactor to undergo this conversion to uranium and then fission than it is to try to fission the uranium atoms directly as done in conventional reactors. This may not seem initially as efficient, but it turns out that much more of the thorium can undergo this conversion to uranium and then fission. As a result, advanced thorium-fueled reactors should be able to extract 40 to 50 times as much energy as conventional uranium-fueled reactors, making them potentially much more fuel-efficient. Conventional uranium-fueled reactors can only extract less than 0.5% of the available energy before the fuel is thrown away. In other words, it would produce less nuclear waste and require much less mining. Because of this fuel economy and other claims of increased safety and decreased radioactive waste, proponents of using atomic energy generally argue that we should give thorium another look. But thorium is so excellent. Why aren't more plants or anyone else using it? It turns out that we did utilize it, or at least attempt to use it. The US ran the molten salt reactor experiment from 1965 to 1969 at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. There were worries at the time about the world's finite uranium deposits and the expansion and construction of nuclear power plants, which would deplete all available uranium within a few decades. The goal was to investigate potential uses for alternative or more effective fuel sources, such as thorium. Instead of the solid fuels used in typical nuclear plants, the inventive design of this experiment uses molten salt or liquid fuel made of uranium and thorium combinations. Pumped through the reactor, the liquid fuel produced significant usable heat. The molten salt reactor experiment, which showed that thorium could be utilized as a fuel, was largely successful. It was deemed a success by Glenn Seaborg the physicist who discovered plutonium and the then chairman of the US Atomic Energy Commission. The Atomic Energy Commission mainly discontinued funding for thorium reactors in 1973 in favor of other designs that, at the time, appeared more promising. What went wrong then? Several design flaws were discovered, but the experiments did show that a thorium molten salt reactor was feasible. The biggest problem was the structural integrity of the metal pipes used to transport the liquid fuel for the molten salt reactor experiment. These pipes were made of a metal alloy called Hastelloy N. The grain boundaries of the salt exposed surfaces on the Hastelloy N surveillance specimens show fissures. When extrapolated to the 30 year design life, the MSRE would not be acceptable due to the depth of the observed cracking. In essence, the pipe was being attacked by fission products in the liquid fuel, which resulted in unexpectedly deep cracks, and the metal wouldn't hold up if it would be in a much larger plant. 
This implied that no design could be practical until more material research could be conducted. The creation and emission of the radioactive and extremely mobile isotope tritium constituted the second significant problem. Tritium production was high due to the complicated chemistry involved in using the liquid fuel. Additionally, because of their small size and difficulty in containment, tritium particles are unexpectedly released outside the reactor and into the environment. Tritium frequently enters the groundwater after leaving the lab, where it can only be found using sophisticated equipment. Additionally, it can cause several health problems if people ingest it by drinking contaminated water. Other reactor designs besides the molten salt reactor can also produce tritium. Several active plants, like those in Canada, make a substantial amount of tritium, but they have gotten better at managing it over time. The development of thorium reactors in the US mainly froze for the following 50 years due to these problems and a general concentration on alternative designs, garnering little interest from the public. However, things have altered during the last 10 years. The resurgence of interest in nuclear power has also sparked the investigation of alternate architectures and fuels like thorium. Despite earlier difficulties, many businesses and government research initiatives have begun lately arguing that thorium merits a second look since technology has progressed sufficiently over the past 50 years to offer it a competitive alternative to the nuclear sector dominated by uranium. The most advanced country is China, which launched its liquid-fueled thorium molten salt reactor in late 2022. The US molten salt reactor experiment served as the basis for the 2 megawatt test reactor, which aims to show that technology has advanced and will genuinely result in a much larger globe by 2030. A solid fuel pebble bed thorium test reactor is also being constructed in China at the same time to evaluate the viability of this alternative strategy. This indicates that China actively supports the construction of at least two distinct reactors using thorium-based designs. Another country in an intriguing position is India, which has enormous thorium reserves worldwide, but nearly no uranium. Contrary to many other nations, India has long considered thorium reactors as a viable option. In the 1950s, the government adopted the three-stage plan to achieve long-term energy independence. Heavy water reactors were the first stage, which was initially built using Canadian technology before becoming domesticated. With more than 20 reactors functioning and 10 more being built, this has been successful. Breeder reactors, of which the first is anticipated to go online in 2023, make up the second stage. These reactors are made to generate plutonium for the third and final stage, which will then be used to ignite reactors that will finally only use thorium as fuel. The fact that it will take many years before it is entirely on a thorium cycle, however, means that this first plan, which was put in place in the 1950s, still has a long way to go. The advanced heavy water reactor was created as a similar strategy by the Indian government. It uses a variety of fuels, and thorium provides roughly 40% of the energy, despite not being a pure thorium reactor. This enables India to rely more on its native thorium resources and reduce its reliance on uranium imports. Flybe Energy is designing a liquid-fueled thorium reactor that it claims is inherently safer and simpler, allows for online refueling, and produces 10,000 times less waste than conventional reactors. On the commercial front, several companies are competing for positions to create attractive designs similar to the Chinese test reactor. A further descendant of the molten salt reactor experiment, a person's whole existence, according to Flybe, would fit into a piece of thorium the size of a golf ball. Flybe anticipates its design to take full advantage of a thorium cycle, allowing it to function very efficiently. Another business, Thor Khan, is attempting to create liquid thorium reactors, but their strategy is to take advantage of the current efficiency of shipbuilding processes. 
the reactor could theoretically be constructed at a shipyard and transported wherever required by utilizing existing components and manufacturing technology. After eight years, the reactor would be returned to the facility for refurbishment and reactivation. Copenhagen Atomics is trying to utilize both thorium and the current stocks of spent nuclear fuel, which is a slightly different strategy. However, it should be noted that the spent fuel they are referring to is primarily separated by plutonium, even though the market sounds different. However, the liquid fuel design concept should neatly fit into a typical 40-foot shipping container, allowing for quick deployment, especially in distant areas. These businesses may have a point. Thorium offers an alternative fuel source to traditional uranium, doubling the raw fuel supply. The highly efficient designs indicate that the current fuel supply may last thousands of years. The designs can enhance safety and reduce nuclear waste when combined with other benefits and technology. The ongoing costs of obtaining more thorium should be significantly lower than those associated with operating conventional uranium plants, which require regular new fuel shipments. Additionally, construction should be substantially easier since many thorium designs operate at atmospheric pressures. According to one analysis, a generic thorium molten salt reactor has a levelized cost of $53.51 per megawatt hour, as opposed to a conventional nuclear plant's levelized cost of $63.08. According to the scale of the plant, Thorcon predicts that the reactor for its floating design will cost between $30 and $50 per megawatt hour. Be aware that wind and solar can range from $30 to $40. Because they haven't been commercialized yet, and even with the benefits of thorium, these plants will probably still be more expensive than renewable energy sources. However, there are still specific difficulties with employing thorium, especially in liquid form. Although they have been significantly reduced, the problems with corrosion and cracking in the pipework have not yet been proven to last the entire lifetime of the reactors. The proper fuel must often be separated from the waste products using intricate chemical processes. Because this liquid is highly radioactive, treating it and getting to the parts for maintenance are also challenging. Liquid fuel spills of any kind could be pretty challenging to clean up. Additionally, the issue with tritium manufacturing still exists. Although specific techniques can minimize the amount, it poses a highly mobile threat. Thus it is essential to establish and adhere to clear environmental limitations. Finally, thorium reactors have only been in operation for around 50 years, compared to the existing conventional reactors powered by uranium, which have accumulated over 10,000 years of operational experience. Most of them are small test reactors. While things appear to be going exceptionally well on paper, Thorium is still susceptible to unexpected events because of the infrastructure for fueling components and knowledge training expertise is not nearly as well known. How successfully these problems are resolved will determine the use of thorium. And as I previously stated, enthusiasm for the advancement of thorium technology is in no short supply, even though occasionally it seems too good to be true. What's your take on this? Why is thorium not more widely known? Should we begin transitioning away from uranium? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity and I'll see you on the next one.